Good morning, grade 9 students. I am April Lyra P. Gomez, a graduate at Philippine Normal University, North Luzon, with a Bachelor in Secondary Education, major in Biology, with certification in Teaching Senior High School, your Science 9 teacher. Before we proceed to our lesson for today, may I ask everyone to please close your eyes and pray. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant me each day the desire to do my best to grow mentally and morally, as well as physically, to be kind and helpful, to be honest with myself as well as with others, Help me to be a good sport and smile when I lose as well as I win. Teach me the value of true friendship. Help me always to conduct myself so as to bring credit to my school. Amen. For today's discussion, we would talk more about projectile motion. These are the objectives. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to define projectile motion, identify sports-related activities that illustrates projectile motion, and explain the importance of projectile motion. What does it mean when we say projectile motion? This is a motion of a body projected horizontally or at an angle other than 90 degree with horizontal is called projectile motion. Examples of projectiles include a soccer ball being kicked, a basketball that was thrown, a bullet fired, and a water out of a fountain. In addition, an object thrown with an initial horizontal velocity and acted upon by Earth's pull of gravity is known as projectile, while a projectile that travels in a curved path is called trajectory. Galileo Galilei first described projectile motion as having two components which are horizontal and vertical. The horizontal component is uniform motion. The vertical compo component is freefall. Throughout the motion of the projectile, change occurs only in the vertical velocity because of the influence of gravity while the horizontal velocity does not alter. Thus, if air resistance is neglected, a projectile moves horizontally at a constant speed and simultaneously travels vertically with acceleration equal to gravity. Take a glimpse at horizontal velocity. Horizontal velocity never changes covers equal displacement in equal time period. It means the initial horizontal velocity equals the final horizontal velocity, meaning hindi siya nagbabago. In other words, the horizontal velocity is constant. Looking at the picture and the arrow red, the direction is always the same. While vertical velocity changes due to gravity and does not cover equal displacement in equal time period. It's the exact opposite of the horizontal velocity. Looking here, both the magnitude, magnitude and direction change. As the projectile moves up, the magnitude decreases and its direction is upward. As it moves down, the magnitude increases and the direction is downward. Summary, these components produce what is called a trajectory or path that is parabolic in nature. Horizontal component is that its magnitudes remain constant and also the direction, while in vertical, it changes. Both magnitude and direction changes. Next, horizontally launched projectiles. Look at the figure. Projectiles which have no upward trajectory and no initial vertical velocity. Meaning, the initial vertical velocity, as you can see from the right, from the, from the left part, it has zero meter per second. That's that talks about its velocity in vertical, in a vertical position. Now you can see also that there is no upward trajectory as the arrow kept on the 
pointing at a certain distance only. X. To analyze a projectile in two dimensions, we need two equations. One for the x direction and one for the y direction. And for this, we use kinematic number 2. In the first formula or equation, the velocity is constant horizontally. So that means that acceleration is 0. And the second equation is that since the projectile is launched horizontally, the, in, the initial vertical velocity is equal to 0. Let's take a look at some example. A plane traveling with a horizontal distance of 100 meter per second is 500 meter above the ground. So in, from this problem, we can have the velocity as 100 meter per second. The unit is meter per second and 500 meter as distance. At some point, the pilot decides to drop some supplies to designated target below. How long is the drop in the air? How far away from point where it was launched will it land? So these are the given. We have the initial velocity such as 100 meter per second. The distance as 500 meter. And also we have in the initial velocity or the velocity in the vertical position which is 0 meter per second. And the gravity which is constant 9.8 meter per second is square. It only varies if the direction is downward or upward. If it if it moves free fall or it moves from from top to bottom, then the uh, then it would be negative. But if a certain thing were thrown uh, thrown upward, the velocity or the acceleration due to gravity, I mean increases increases meaning uh, in yes of course it increases and uses a positive sign so what is being asked from this question we have time and also the distance so let us use first the formula of initial vertical velocity which is one half times acceleration due to gravity times time square. So we're going to derive and use the given. So since we have a 500 meter, we're going to use that one equals one half times negative 9.8 times t square. T square because we do not have the raw, the raw data or value of time. Now, after substituting the value into that equation, we're going to multiply 0.5 or 1 half into the value of the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8. And we would have a value of negative 4.9. Right after that, we are going to divide uh, we're going to divide 500 into negative 4.9. So, negative 500 divided to negative 4.9 would be equals to 102.04. So, after getting that value, we're going to get the value of time. So, what are we going to do? We're going to square root 102.04 to cancel out that square. So, the value would be 10.10 or 10.1 seconds so that's the value of time now let's move on to the velocity horizontal velocity so we're going to use the formula of velocity times time so since we have the value already of the velocity 100 meter per second we're going to multiply it to the time that we got, which is 10.1 seconds. Now, 100 times 10.1 would be 10, 1, 1,010 meters. So this is the summary of vertically launched projectiles. Horizontal remain constant, vertical, the magnitude decreases up, zero at top and increases down. And direction changes, of course. 
Since the projectile was launched at an angle, the velocity must be broken into components. So this is, is one. We're going to use cosine theta and sine theta to be multiplied into velocity, depending on the whether it is horizontal or vertical. If it begins and ends at a ground level, the, the y displacement is zero. Again, if it begins and ends at a ground level, the, the, the y display, displacement is zero. Next, so still we're going to use this formula. For the horizontal part, we're going to use velocity times cosine theta. And in the vertical, the vertical component, velocity times sine theta. So sample exercise. A place kicker kicks a football with a velocity of 20 meter per second and at an angle of 53 degrees. How long is the ball in the air? How far does it land and how high does it travel? So we're going to use this formula. So we have velocity, velocity times cosine theta. So we're going to substitute the value that we got. So the value of the velocity is 20 meter per second and the angle would be 53 degree. So 20 times 20 cosine 53 would be 12.036 or 0 or 0 0.04 because we'll be rounding it off into two decimal points. So after that, we're going to have the also the value of the velocity in vertical position. So velocity sine theta. So also 20 meter per second sine then 53 then we're going to have a value of 15.97 meter per second. Next, how long is the ball in the air? So we're talking about time in here. So we're going to get the velocity in vertical position using the formula of velocity times time plus one half times acceleration due to gravity times time is square. So we're going to substitute the value. So we have the value in here, 15.97. How did we came up with 15.97? That's what we've got a while back. So we're going to substitute now, 15.97 15 times time. And how did we came up with 4.9? Because the value of acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, or negative 9.8, of course. Then, we're going to multiply it by half. So, with that, we would have 4, or negative 4.9. So, given that, we're going to divide negative 4.9 into 15 negative 15.97 so negative 15.97 divided to negative 4.9 would be 3.25 or 3.26 next one how far away does it land so we're going to know the distance given or using that time that we got. So the velocity would be 12.04 in horizontal position or component multiplied to 3.6. So if we multiply that, we'll have a value of 39.24 meter. Lastly, how high does it travel? So we're going to use the formula of the vertical component which is vertical or i'm sorry velocity times time plus one half times acceleration due to gravity times time is square so let's substitute the value 15.97 for the velocity of in velocity of the vertical component times time or 1.63 why is it 1.63 
given that the give, given that the time here is 3.26 why is it 1.63 because it is only half projectile so we're going to uh, have the half value of it less 4.9 times 1.53 square so how did we get 4.9 it is because we multiply gravity into one half now with all that value we're going to have 13.01 meter so in here we have the formula for horizontal and vertical component we have the the half projectile here and full projectile for both component and these are some other kinematics equation to be used in projectile motion so we only we also have six of these now identify which sports activity illustrates projectile motion and lastly project launch yourself and be discovered thank you for listening